In this video, we're talking about using lighting reflectors for outdoor portraits. Now, I'll start off by admitting that I get a little spoiled working in the studio. Having total control over my lighting definitely makes it easier to get the look I want for my portraiture. And I know there's a learning curve when it comes to studio lighting, but once you get your basics down, it's all very straightforward. With outdoor lighting, on the other hand, you've got to deal with nature's inconsistencies. To me anyway, this makes shooting outdoors a little more of a challenge. I mean, you've got to work with the light and the conditions that you're given, and you've got to try to bend them to your will. You can always bring a flash or two along to add some extra light or overpower the sun, but sometimes a couple of simple lighting reflectors are all you really need. And the trick, of course, is knowing how to use them. Okay, here are three general tips for using lighting reflectors outdoors. A silver, gold, or otherwise very shiny reflector should not be used to bounce a reflection from the sun directly onto your subject's face, especially direct sunlight. It's just too bright. Instead, use a reflector to bounce the ambient light from the environment toward the subject to fill in those shadows. Secondly, a good alternative to those shiny reflectors is a white reflector, a scrim, or any white panel. And keep in mind, you're probably going to have to bring it in very close to your subject's face and angle it just the right way for a pleasing fill. Now third, reflectors can be used any number of ways and what's good about them, as opposed to augmenting the ambient light with flash, is that you can see the effect of using them in real time. And this is going to allow you to adjust their position and angle until you see what you like, and then, of course, you just snap the photo. You can even use them to block or flag light, to create shade, or as scrims, like using white translucent panels to tame down direct sunlight. Okay, so here are a few examples from a recent shoot. And note that these are unedited versions of the photos, so you're seeing the images essentially as they came out of the camera. Now here you can see I've got the subject with the sun at her back, which serves two purposes. One, it provides a nice backlight, or a hair light or a rim light, which gives her a nice separation from the background. And two, it keeps the direct sunlight out of her face, so we don't have that problem of squinting with our portrait. The only problem is that her face is now naturally in shadow. We add some fill light to the shadows with the white reflector and this is a 32 inch white translucent light disc by Photoflex. For comparison, you can see the effect of a Westcott Illuminator 42 inch reflector to fill in the shadows for this shot. And here I'm showing the effect of using the silver side of the reflector. This is a nice pop of light, but not as natural looking as the more subtle fill off the white reflector. And using the gold side of the reflector just doesn't look right at all to me, especially in this placement where the light is bouncing back toward the subject from a lower angle. Now moving to a different location, even though there's plenty of ambient light bouncing around the environment, we can still make good use of the white reflector. And finally, I wanted to show you that a reflector can be used to add in some backlight or side light or otherwise some additional light for dimension. And this can be especially useful when the conditions are providing rather flat lighting or when you just want to add some extra pop to areas other than the subject's face. Here's a shot without a reflector. And then here's a silver reflector on the hair at camera left. And for comparison, the gold reflector on the hair at camera left. Okay, as a bonus, this is how I created a white background shot using the white reflector disc as a background. The sun is behind the subject and the silver reflector is serving as a fill light. Now, actors often need a headshot like this for commercial work and standard headshots for acting in dramatic roles. So this is a quick solution for creating the commercial headshot when a white backdrop or a white wall isn't available on a location shoot. 